Greetings and welcome to the Maple Avenue United Methodist Church worship service. This is for December the 27th, 2020. Can you believe it? This is the last time we're going to be worshiping together in 2020. The next time we get together, it will be 2021. And I don't know how you feel, but uh, 2021 can't come fast enough for me at this point. Now, there are a few things that have come out of this year. And one of them, though, is that if you missed our Christmas Eve service, which was very well done by a number of our local young people, and if you missed our music Sunday last week, you can still be part of those services. They are still available online, and you can always tune them in and watch them or re-watch them, uh, whatever you feel like doing. And if you need anything uh, for this coming year, uh, don't be afraid to give us a call at the office. Uh, I think it will be closed quite a bit this next week because it is the week after Christmas. But uh, uh, if you want to call and leave a message, our number is 812-232-7263. Now, will you please join me in the call to worship, which we will do responsively. In every darkness, we see a light, the light of Jesus Christ. In every sorrow, we see a joy, the joy of Jesus Christ. In every trial, we see a hope, the hope of Jesus Christ. Oh God, help us to rediscover the light, the joy, and the hope of Christmas in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. take a moment now to go before God in prayer and placing our prayer list on the altar table. Let us lift our hearts together in prayer. Lord God, we are grateful that we stand at the end of an old year ready to launch forward into a new one. Thank you for walking with us through the many ups and downs of the past year. We are sorry, Lord, for those times when we failed to hear your voice or heard your voice and ignored it, the times we neglected to shine with the light of Christ or embody his spirit of grace and love, the times when we didn't place your kingdom first. Forgive us of these things and give us the wisdom to learn from our mistakes of the past so we won't be repeating them this coming year. Lord, we are grateful that there are vaccines now making the rounds and we can realistically look forward to the ending of this pandemic. Help us to continue in the right direction until the isolation and social distancing of the past become the memories of our present. Continue to be with those afflicted by illness and misfortune. We lift up those who care for them and ask for your protection as they do their work serving others and bring healing and strength to those suffering. 
We pray for those dealing with the virus, cancer, vertigo, problems with their vision, and any other kind of chronic issues of the body, mind, and spirit. Bring us your healing and grace and use us to be instruments of that healing and grace throughout the days ahead. Be with our nation as well, especially as we transition from one administration to another. Bring insight and compassion to those who are in leadership positions and make us to be a blessing to all the world. We pray these things in the name of Jesus Christ, praying as he taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. Thank you. 
Christmas with three boys Could only lead to lots of noise We'd always drive the grown-ups mad And completely unhinged by dad Then he'd turn off Grandpa's singing trout And get the Christmas records out With Andy, Johnny, Babs, and Bill We'd all be Our scripture reading for today comes from Galatians chapter 3, verse 23 to 26, and then 4, verses 4 to 7. Let us listen to what God would have us hear in this reading of the scriptures. Now, before faith came, we were imprisoned and guarded under the law until faith would be revealed. Therefore, the law was our disciplinarian until Christ came, so that we might be justified by faith. But now that faith has come, we are no longer subject to a disciplinarian. For in Christ Jesus, you are all children of God through faith. But when the fullness of time had come, God sent his son, born of a woman, born under the law, in order to redeem those who were under the law, so that we might receive adoption as children. And because you are children, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a child. And if a child, then also an heir through God. Christ is among us in the reading of these scriptures. Thanks be to God. Amen. A few months ago, a music teacher wrote a song 
to express her feelings about moving to remote learning. And the lyrics of the song, I think, very poignantly captured the way many of us feel about the entire year of 2020. Uh, this is that very short and meaningful song. Hey, so as some of you guys might know, I'm a music teacher and I found that one of the best ways that I can process the whole transition to online learning and teaching is to write a song. So I wrote a song. I'd like to share that with you guys now. Here we go. See, what did I tell you? Isn't that the way many of us feel about the entire year? That's now behind us. But as bad as 2020 has been, it's not as bad as the world was for the people of Israel 2,000 years ago. They were living under Roman oppression. They were devastated and depressed and demoralized, and life for them was pretty bad. And to these hurting people living in darkness, God sent help. Help for them, help for all people who are struggling in a difficult situation. And that help was Jesus Christ. So how is it that Jesus Christ helps them and helps us in these difficult times? Well, first of all, Paul says in Galatians that Jesus changes the way that we relate to God. We no longer relate to God as servants or slaves, but we're adopted into God's family. We relate to God as offspring. Paul says, now that faith has come, we are no longer subject to a disciplinarian, for in Christ Jesus, you are all children of God through faith. In other words, we relate to God not by fear and intimidation, but we relate to God through trust and love. And that simple difference in our relationship to God makes a big difference in our lives. We are deeply and dearly loved by God, so much so that Paul says we cry out to God, Abba, Father. And Abba didn't simply mean Father. It was a term of endearment, of intimacy, one that a child might call his father uh, lovingly. We have that kind of an endearing, loving, intimate relationship with God. We always have that love there for us. During World War II, there were four soldiers that had a little bit of time uh, off that they were given, and they headed to a French village that was nearby. And as they were entering the village, they realized that it was Christmas Eve, and they wanted to do something special on Christmas Eve, and they passed an orphanage, and one of them said, hey, why don't we buy a bunch of presents and candy and clothes and all kinds of cool stuff and take it to the orphanage and give it to the kids there on Christmas Day? And they thought it was a marvelous idea, and so they went into the town and they pulled their money and they bought all of these toys and clothes and candy and cool stuff that the kids, they thought, would really like. And then the next day, they knocked on the door of the orf orphanage and explained that they had gifts for all of the children there. And the managers of the orphanage were, of course, very pleased. And the children were thrilled. And the soldiers came in and began dispersing their presents to all the kids. And most of them really seemed to be happy and enjoying the whole thing. But there was one little girl, maybe six or seven years old, standing off in a corner who wasn't participating and didn't seem happy at all. And they asked the uh, managers of the orphanage about her and they said, uh, well, she just arrived about a week ago. Her parents died tragically in a car accident. Uh, she's just getting used to being here. So one of the soldiers went over to her and said, uh, honey, dear, we've got all kinds of really neat presents. Why don't you come over and let us give you something. Pick something out, whatever it is you want. Why don't you come over and get something? And she didn't move. And he said, well, what do you really want for Christmas? And the little girl said very simply, 
I want somebody to hold me. Isn't that what all of us really want in the end? We don't want lots and lots of stuff. What we really want, what we really need, is somebody to hold us, somebody to love us, somebody to care for us, no matter what and through no matter what. That's the gift that God gives to us through Jesus Christ, an unconditional love that is always there for us. We are not slaves. We are offspring, not servants. We are children of God, adopted by God, and the God's very family, dear to God. Jesus changes the way we relate to God, and that, that in turn, changes us, gives us a source of power and strength that we didn't have before. Uh, and because you are children of God, Paul writes, he sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. Because we are children of God, God has sent the spirit of Jesus into our hearts. We have that resource that we didn't have before. Our change in our relationship to God really changes us in the end. Margaret uh, Blair writes in Reader's Digest a few years ago about how uh, when they were living in Massachusetts, they were hit by the winds of a hurricane. And her young son Blair was of course frightened by the wind, noise outside, and it kept getting worse and worse, and Blair was getting very nervous. And then finally, all of the power went out, and they found themselves sitting in total darkness. And she could hear her son, Blair, sobbing in the distance. And so she called out to him, you might just as well calm down. After all, there's nothing we can do about it. And Blair wisely said, mother, I know there's nothing we can do about it, but isn't there something we can do about us? And that's the bottom line. Oftentimes when we find ourselves in difficult situations, there's nothing we can really do about the situation, but there's plenty we can do about ourselves. And by changing ourselves, we change everything. And if you think about it, isn't that the theme to so many of the Christmas movie classics that we like to watch around this time of year? Look at uh, Charles Dickens' The Christmas Carol. Uh, in it, Ebenezer Scrooge's world doesn't change at all, really, but he changes on Christmas Eve. And because he wakes up a different person, everything is different for him. Or think about George Bailey in It's a Wonderful Life. Uh, you know, in that movie, his world doesn't really change that much from the beginning to the end. Uh, but the thing that does change is he himself. And because he changes in the movie, everything changes. And everything is different. Or look at uh, How the Grinch Stole Christmas, one of my favorites, and I have to watch that one every year. Uh, the Grinch, uh, his world is the same before and after. But what changes in the movie is the Grinch. And because the Grinch changes, everything is different. Uh, a lot of times we find ourselves facing trials and tribulations and troubles that we don't know what we can do about and we don't know how to go about changing them. Sometimes we can't change them but we can always allow ourselves to be changed by the power of God. We can always find wisdom and courage and strength to rise above those trials and tribulations that are blocking our path. Uh, because uh, of Jesus Christ, we have a new relationship with God. We have the spirit of Christ that changes us and better equips us to deal with the trials that we face and we have a hope and a destiny. We have a future in and through Christ. So you are no longer a slave, but a child. And if a child, then also an heir through God. What is an heir? Somebody who has a future, a hope, an inheritance waiting for them. 
Amy Fabris uh, was contacted by a man from a group called Finders International and told that she had an inheritance that she knew absolutely nothing about uh, and the inheritance was around 7,000 pounds. Uh, and it was from her father, who she never knew. He had abandoned her mother when her mother was pregnant with her. She never heard anything from him, never knew anything about him. But he had died, and his inheritance was for her. And so she quite unexpectedly received this sum of money that she didn't know existed. Uh, I didn't know that there are groups like Finders International that exist, and people out there whose job is to track down folk who have an inheritance due to them and then connect them to that inheritance. The thing is, Finders International and most of these people and most of these groups have a commission. They'll contact you and say, we have an inheritance for you that we can probably connect you to, and if you give us 30% of that inheritance, we will connect you. And if you say yes, then they connect you, you get the money, and they get their cut of it. Uh, and supposedly there's millions, if not billions of dollars floating around in the United States and all around the world of unclaimed inheritance money that people don't know about and simply haven't been able to claim because of that. Well, I've got good news for you. Jesus Christ doesn't charge a 30% commission to inform us that we have an inheritance with God through him. In Christ, we have a future. No matter what happens in the world, no matter what happens to us, in Christ, we have an inheritance. In Christ, we are not slaves, but children of God and, in Paul's words, heirs of God. What help does God send to the people of Israel 2,000 years ago? The same help that God sends to us today. God gives us a new way of relating to him, not based on fear and intimidation, but on love, changing us from slaves to children. God gives us the spirit of Christ that empowers us to rise above those obstacles that we find in our path. And God gives us a future in and through Christ, an inheritance that is always there and is waiting for us whether or not we believe it or even embrace it. We always have, through faith, the love and the hope of God. Robert Louis Stevenson, the author of numerous uh, classics, including Treasure Island, had to deal with bad health through much of his life and wrote in spite of it. And one day while he was writing, he was racked with a coughing fit that just, you know, shook him to the bone. And his wife came in and said to him, Robert, I expect you still believe it's a wonderful day. And Stevenson smiled back at her. And noticing the rays of sunshine, bouncing off of his bedroom walls, sunlight that uh, was shining through all the medicine bottles that lined his window. Stevenson said, I do believe it's a wonderful day. I will never allow a row of medicine bottles to block my horizon. Whatever bottles are blocking your horizon, may God's gift to us of Jesus Christ shine through them today, giving us faith, giving us love, and giving us hope for our future. In Christ's name, amen.
Let us pray. O oh God, we are grateful that in the midst of our trials and tribulations, you have not abandoned us, but chosen to walk with us and to share our struggles through Jesus Christ. In Christ, may we find your help. In Christ, Lord, may we find strength for today, hope in our future, and a new relationship with you. In Christ's name, amen. Well, that concludes our worship service for this week. And tune us in next week. If you are enjoying these services or finding them at all meaningful, please like them on Facebook and follow us on YouTube and do whatever you can do to encourage uh, the viewing of our videos. We appreciate you doing that. And now, may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you forever. Amen.